Hello everyone, I just finished up having a very exciting uh, meeting with the Turtle Wow radio team. It was fun to uh, meet some of the people that I've been kind of a co-worker with, I guess. Cooking up a lot of fun stuff coming up. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Sorry, I, I pretty much got stream started like right on time today. I normally have a little bit of a run up, but uh, here we are today. Let me just get everything out to all the discords to let them know. Uh, we are fishing in Red Ridge today. Um, I'm fishing in a place where um, horde folk will not be bothered by guards. Uh, live now, we'll do that. Okay, and put that over here, and over here. All right, um, Lizzie Babs, I think you, I think you posted like last night. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Babs the Merv. Uh, oh, hold on, I remember pronouncing this name last week. Mm. My winnow, my winnow. Channel Lurker, hello. Captain uh, uh, Oblivious, hello. Channel Lurker, as always, I know you're always there in the background. Lax Elf, hello. So, uh, for map, uh, we are right in Red Ridge, the lovely, lovely zone. I actually, um, and uh, I know a lot of people say that I am very horde friendly, but I will say Red Ridge is actually one of my favorite zones. Um, it's uh, just well designed. It's pretty. It has really good quests in it. Um, just an honestly like S tier zone. We're gonna be right here in Lake, uh, right in this little, not really a peninsula, but uh, just a spot in the in the lake uh, for coordinate junkies. We'll be at thirty six fifty seven is where we're at. Um, I'm shirtless only because I was uh, swimming a little bit. Uh, there was some low-level person here who <laughs> was like, Hey, how's it going? I'm like, you want to see something cool? And then I swam really fast. Uh, hello. Uh, oh, hello, Nonon. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Nonon, absolutely the homie. Uh, yesterday, I went, I, <laughs> on a whim... I logged on uh, on a Friday. My normal Friday engagements didn't take me late into the evening, so I don't normally get to do Molten Core with my guild, but I just logged on. I didn't even say anything except for hi to the guild, and then I got an invite to Molten Core, and I'm like, oh no, they probably need help. So I started running over, and I got into the Discord, and and I, I heard everyone laughing and having fun, and it was just so good to hear. They were pretending to speed run it <laughs> it didn't go great um but uh, a lot of fun happened last night but the reason i bring up uh a no non is because my shaman has the shard of the scale which um i don't have atlas loot enabled but uh shard of the scale many healers know it's a nice mp5 uh piece i use it when i heal on my shaman but it is actually uh, part one of two of a two-set piece. There's Shard of the Scale and Shard of the Flame, I think. I can't even remember the... Anyway, it dropped off Rag. No one really wants it because, honestly, it gives health per five, which is one of the most underwhelming and underpowered stats in the game. Um, but since it's part of a set, there's a set bonus, which increases the MP5 of the shard of the scale. Uh, and it also gives 10 resistance. Uh, so it pretty much just went to like MS roll, I guess. And I rolled on it because I want to get the set. And Nonon won it on the roll. But Nonon is, is playing a mage. And I'm like, dude, you don't need that. Get out of here. <laughs> and he traded it to me. And, that, and, and that's the homie move. Thank you. <laughs> so now, now I have that trinket two piece. the The set is complete. 
uh, Channel Lurker says, Red Ridge has a whole hero's journey from having a guard to look up to to fighting a wizard. Is that, yeah, exactly. Um, it's really it's really boilerplate, like, fantasy RPG zone. You have, you have pretty much all the basic story beats of a good questing zone. It, it fits quite well. Um, you also have, like, uh, the big bads, right? The Tower of uh, Il Ilgalar and Stonewatch Keep, full of, like, bad guys. Stonewatch Keep has uh, Black Rock Orcs in there. It's your first interaction with them. And one of the other fun things, too, is that part of your normal adventuring route, like, you're going to go north into, like, Render's Camp. You're going to fight, like, Knolls. And then there's Orcs up here. But if you take this wrong turn right here, you end up in Burning Steps. And you'll see, like, end game mobs and you will be terrified if you're like leveling for the first time so it even has like that mystique of like like there's much more dangerous things out there um obviously this is a horror tune so i haven't fully explored these zones right here um but i have gone over here before i've brought um i wonder if i even have one uh if anyone knows in bwl um is it tome i don't think i, I might not have it on this character uh, anyway, warlocks get a demon portal book they can find in BWL. Um, it's not that great, I guess, as far as warlocks have told me, and it drops frequently enough that most warlocks already have it. So what I like to do in this zone specifically, uh, if I have, because uh, I do master looting, sometimes I'll just grab one of the books. So I'll go to this zone. Um, I'll dress up in like my normal, like, you know, fish slayer garb and I'll stealth around and then I'll wait for like a low level warlock to pass by and I'll just be like I'll, I'll unstealth and be like hey hey uh I got I got a book I found are you interested and if I get someone who takes it like actually engages me in conversation I'll do like an RP like uh kind of like a a thief who picked up something and it's it's like a hot item and they're just trying to get rid of it um, and the guy will be like, well, how much do you want for it? And I, I usually just give it to them. Like they can pay like a silver or something. And then the second they have the book in their inventory, I, ha I, 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 I don't think I still even have the macros, but I'll do something like, I'll start like doing like a nefarious laughter. And then I'll be like, your, your soul is, is fated. And then I'll just do vanish and I will never respond to any of their whispers. <laughs> I like to make them think like they have like a cursed book and uh, I'm pretty sure Tome of Demon Portal, you can't learn until you're 60 anyway. So there's a chance like there's still some people out there who like just have it in their inventory and they haven't finished leveling up and they're still wondering what it does. That is that is like my favorite thing to do for like random RP. <laughs> Yeah, Riddle, exactly. Riddle's like, yeah, we get so many demon portal books, we end up vendoring them. They vendor for 10 gold, so it's not it's not terrible. Um, there was someone else who was here earlier. Um, who I wasn't sure if... I think I just ran into them, but... Yes, yes, um, Bellius, it is a fantastic day for fishing. Um... You will catch such wild things as raw bristle whisker catfish and raw longjaw mud snappers. I think that's all you can catch here. I haven't caught anything else, but maybe I will. Um, anyway, that first person who was over here, though, they gave uh, they dropped some uh, they gave me some boiled clams to eat. So I had a food buff on for a little bit. I haven't got any red snappers. By the way, saying red snappers, that's that's um that's cultural appropriation. Um, I'm from I'm from New England and I live close to Boston, so you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, that's that that's my culture. Everyone drinking donkeys. I'm going to post in the Turtle Wow radio thing, too. All right, we've got 
got that posted too. Hello, Frisch. Good to see you, friend. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, uh, that, I think this fishing dock might actually be safe for us hordies. The other docks are not safe, though. Or we would get flagged, I think. And they have the, they have the ruined boat here. Lot, I mean, lots of fun stuff here. There's even, um, sunken, uh, lock boxes. Uh, if you're, like, a rogue and trying to level up lock picking, you have to find these. And there's even, like, an underwater monster somewhere out there. It's your first experience seeing, like, a thresher beast. I'm telling you, Red, Red Ridge got it all. <laughs> That's true, channel. Not not that I want to start a, a dialogue about cultural appropriation. I was just joking around. Hello, Thalaria. Good to see you. Good to see some of my, my EU homies hanging out. I, I assume Frisch is is EU because of the name Frisch. I know Thalaria is EU because of that guild name. Does it have a rare dragon spawn? I didn't know that. Interesting. Lur Lurker tells me there's a rare dragon spawn. It has uh, it has murlocs too. And and don't get me wrong, um, I think uh, the the human starting zone and early leveling areas are some of the best designed, and it's it's not because like. Um, humans are somehow better to like write source material for it's just the stuff they first wrote the first they wrote material for so they got a lot of the early on love now let me turn up desktop audio a little bit there hopefully you guys can hear some of the music i i try turning it up sometimes the problem is, is that I also play the game, so I won't always necessarily want <laughs> the sound setting the way it is. Oh, Frisch says the rare dragon is post kata You look kind of blue today. I guess it's because I'm wearing blue pants, but I'm just wearing my, my, uh, my swimming set. I should probably put on my fishing gear. My RP fish slayer set. There it is. Now I'm a proper fisherman. Fisher or, excuse me. Yeah, I, I know it's it's a very vanilla it's a very vanilla take, but I mean you can just tell that like um even in Red Ridge, the way the quests feed into each other, the way the zone's designed, it's just um here in Westfall. Uh, maybe Westfall less so, but it's still definitely a good, a good zone. Hello, Scarfade. Good to see you. Oh, is that a, is that another, uh, another rogue with a Thunder Fury, or is that a Tmog? Let's let's find out. Um, is that a is that a real Thunder Fury, sir? Yeah. Yep. Yep, it checks out. I mean, I guess if I had uh, name tags enabled, I could just <laughs> yeah. There you, go. you have storm wielder. Sorry, let me let me show you. I am one of the brothers. There he is. I got my storm wielder title on. It's one of the uh, good slash bad parts about having a server be <laughs> this old is that you'll just find random people with thunder furies if they've been on the server long enough. Oh, it's Durgan. Hello, my dwarf friend. Good to see you. Durgan uh, joined us last week. Um, hopefully we don't interrupt any of your RP schedule today. Headmaster's charge. Oh, is that isn't that the mount? No. No, no, no. That's the that's the rare staff. Let's take a look at that bad boy. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, if you want to look like an edgy caster, 
I mean, that thing screams Warlock. I know you're a mage, but that thing screams Warlock. Right? That's that's a great one. My mic's low? Is that true? Bef before I read into Scarfade uh, gaslighting me, is my mic actually low? Oh, wow. It does actually look a little low. Hold on. All right. Is that... Oh boy, I really don't want to touch this stuff. I have a soundboard. I'm gonna nudge up the volume knob. Did that make any difference? No. Huh. I'm not sure why. Frisch says it sounds good. Does anyone else in um, stream chat or local chat have any comments about how my mic's coming in? Did I change the gain somewhere? I don't think I did. Let me check. Uh, nope, that looks good. Oh, you know what? Murag might have touched it. I, I love Murag very much, but... She was recording something for Turtle Wow Radio. She's, she did another skit, I think. So, that might have been it. Alright. Voice meter input. Um. Ah. Okay, did that change anything? Okay, yep, yep, there it is, there it is, yep, okay. All right, I should be louder now. Sorry about that if I just blew out anyone's <laughs> eardrums. Th thank you. Hey, I, I appreciate the call out. It actually helps me a lot. Because um, I essentially... I have like a nice mic on this computer um, that I was able to get with... Um, if if any, anyone's been around long enough, you know I did the survival guide video for the patch... Um, I was contracted to do that, so I took the money that I got from the team for doing that video and and purchased myself a, a soundboard and a nice mic. So when um, the Turtle Wow Radio team does, uh, when they need a female voice actor, there's actually another female voice actor uh, who's on the team now too. Um, Bella, I think her name is. So there's Murag and Bella, and someone wrote something they needed a voice actor for who was, who was a lady. And uh, Murag did it. So she had to get on my computer. So she might have messed with some of the audio settings. I think that's what happened. Thank you, though. Yeah, Downey, thank you. I did, I did, uh, I did correct stuff. It's nice, at least. Um, Streamlabs or OBS, they have like a, um, a thing that allows you to see how strong your output is. And so generally, if it's in the yellow, we're feeling mellow. If it's red, your eardrums are dead. And if it's green, no one knows what you mean because they can't hear you. And yes, sometimes I have to make things rhyme to remember them, technologically speaking. Hey, Channel Lurker, Murug went to the gym. And I don't think anyone goes to the gym watching Fish and Chat. Maybe someone does. If you do, let me know. That's awesome. Um. So, sh uh, terrible, terrible. Be nice, terrible. Uh, Torta, uh, is also a a woman and could do voice acting, but I think in general they. They wanted people that had better command of the English language for the radio show. Um, so I d also, I've only been in a call with Torta once. I, I don't think she has the best mic. It's hard to remember. Thalaria says, my ears are resilient. They're used to metal music, amongst others. 
Uh, T Swift, I'm sorry. I know you whispered me hoping to say hi, YouTube, but um, sadly, I have um, as part of like my stream overlay, I I block out chat in case someone says something and they don't want to get harassed. <laughs> so anything ha interesting happened this week um we've had two weeks in a row where the news has been kind of slow um change logs have been short there hasn't been any big announcements thank you t swift i appreciate you saying that wise beard hello thank you for chilling the water down i guess who else we have? Oh, there we go. Scarfade is in the uh, the classic for a bold costume. Love to see that. Also, I, I do want to say, Wisebeard. This uh this this team of yours. Not bad. Not bad. It's a, it's a good look. Um trying to go for like a uh, some kind of a slick shell coin trader, maybe. How is the herb index going? Uh, Thalaria, I could take a look at it in a second if you want. I have to uh, run the scripts. Let me um, let me get the scripts going. Just give me a sec here. Um, they have to update, so. Uh, Update.bat. Let me see if I can. I wonder if I could put that on. I could probably put it on stream. Hold on. Uh, da -da -da. Do that, and then we'll do. Is that? There it is. See, <laughs> that's my script runner right now. It's scraping data. It's scra It's scraping data. Oh, I have to unlock it. I think. There it is. I'll make it a little smaller so it doesn't take up all the. When that window goes away, that's when the uh, the thing is done scanning, I, I believe. Oh, does it not scroll down? I guess it doesn't. Oh, no, it'll start scrolling now, I think. Right? Let me check. Yep, it'll start scrolling. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it probably is going up. But uh, yeah, that's the um, that's the script my buddy Sonic made for me, that goes onto WowAuctions.net and just uh, scrapes all their data and throws it into a database folder for me. And he also wrote a script that makes uh, the charts that you'll see, like for indexes and things like that. Um, fun news: I don't know if it's active on Wow Auction uh yet but for those who are in the know or who have been watching the news uh you'll be aware that the really two good ammunitions for guns and uh i guess bows and crossbows uh which would be miniature cannonballs and doom shot respectively uh those have been made into bind on equip essentially so people can go to those instances which is Lower Black Rock Spire and Strat Live, I believe, for the cannonballs. Uh, they can get them and they can put them on the auction house. Um, I think that we might actually. Let's see. Is Doom Shot on the auction house? Doom Shot. Yep, see? If you really wanted to parse hard and for some reason didn't want to buy a full 200 stack, which I guess is the case here. People are selling their their partially used stuff. Um, looks like it cost eight silver a bullet. That's pretty expensive, but um, twenty adds twenty damage per second to arrows. Let's check if miniature miniature cannon. Will that show? Yep, there it is. These are selling for much less, I think, because there aren't as many really strong guns. Usually hunters would be looking for these, right? I don't think hunters use guns as much, but uh, you can buy them a little cheaper. And there's a lot more in the auction house. I think more people do strat live, so. Oh, they don't drop in a full stack? I thought they 
did, then how did someone have a auction up for 200? Is it random how many drops? Channel Lurker, I respect that by the way. Channel Lurker says, I'm a goblin, I refuse to use anything but guns. Um, true story, my my main, essentially, uh, a bomb swim, it is like a bissed out elemental shaman, does not have a mount. I refuse to get a mount because I like plane striding. <laughs> hello, hello, <laughs> Techno Molin. I think you say the same thing every time you jump in. Hmm. Regarding Hateforge Quarry, I do hope you'll be telling the lore from the Dark Iron perspective, the true perspective. <laughs> um, I think I know who Durgan is. Or at least I've, I think I've had separate conversations with Durgan. Um, people might know uh, I've been working in the background on a, uh, a, essentially a dungeon guide video for Hateforge Quarry. Um, I, I literally have all the lore beats scripted out. I have all the video assets. Um, it's been stalled out because I've been working on other projects. I meant the Hate Forge Quarry Dungeon Guide thing to sort of be something I do when I have extra time. Um, I have had a little extra time because of the news being slower, but uh, I've used that bonus time to uh, <laughs> keep on top of raid consumables and try to get my uh, shaman ahead of the curve. If you are in a group that will allow you to play more Mimi specs for a raid, like um, Blackwing Guard does for me with Elemental. Um, it's generally understood that you will consume as hard as you can to keep up with the classes that can just press one button and do 30% more damage than you, like mages. <laughs> Techno, life is good, friend. Life is good. Um, and, 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 you know, to, to, to answer Durgan, who is, he was a little concerned that my coverage of Hateforge Quarry might be, um, I guess, uh, what, what's the name of the, the dwarves? I know there's like the wild hammer and then there's the, the dark iron. What's the name of like the ones that the Alliance have? Someone must know. So in my, uh, anyway, you might think that my coverage might be from that perspective. It's not. <laughs> Broad spirit, sorry. Hmm. Um, my coverage will be from the perspective of someone who's curious about Hateforge Quarry. Doesn't know anything about it, or maybe has done it and doesn't know why it's there, how it's there. And also for someone trying to know when it's a good time to do it. So I cover some of the major quests there. There's quests for Horde and Alliance to go there. And in fact, I do cover the storyline of the revenge-driven NPC who wants to kill the Senators. And has also left Hateforge Quarry. So I, he's a Dark Iron guy that is very upset and wants people dead. So I do cover his angle. Um, and I cover... Uh, I also cover a little bit about the Blackrock orcs that have shunned Rend and Blackrock Mountain. And they made a little zone. It's a, a Carfang hold right there. Um, and have made a zone specifically for them. There's a quest as well to... They want to be jumped into the horde. And so there's like a little beginner quest for that. Uh, for the conversations between... Uh, I think I think Carfang? I don't remember who their leader is. But um, 
you take a letter to Thrall anyway. And when you go to Thrall, Thrall's like, uh, I don't really know the Blackrock clan that well, but I have a buddy here, Atrig, who does. And Atrig's like, yeah, I know this guy. He's a good dude. He's like, yeah, we should hear him out. And that's pretty much the quest. But, <laughs> um, and then the people at the Blackrock clan also want you to do stuff in Hitforge Quarry. But it's really cool. I think it is a shop option. Oh, oh, I, I see what I see what you're saying, right? Frisch said it'd be cool if they make uh like an actual race option, but it's a shop option. Yeah, um the the Black Rock orcs are very interesting. Like with their what I understand of their history, which isn't as much as I probably should know, but uh I've definitely I've, I've raided with some that were into RP, and I also raided with. Um, and so sometimes, like, we would RP a little bit, and I would learn a lot about their uh, their background. Is I don't think everything's going great for the Blackrock Orcs. I think some of them are aware of that, because uh, Nefarian essentially has Ren under mind control. You get to hear a lot of the lore when um, Blacktooth Grin was around. Oh, also, it looks like my uh, my thing here is done. Let's uh, go and make. Uh, just give me a second here. Uh, let's go to index. The herbalism. Let's just see what it's done in the last two weeks. Um, today is... Wow, March 16th already. That's crazy. Generating the graph. Graph generation is done. Uh, Alessandro, we are in Red Ridge, friend. And I'm bringing up the... Herbalism. Alright, where'd you go? H... GH. And where are you? Okay, you should be done. You should be done. I'm not sure why stuff keeps bouncing around here. That's very weird. All right, this was made on the 16th. There it is. Okay. All right, let's see if I can get this to show off. <sighs> we will go... Oh. It's still scanning? Okay. That then... Okay. I thought it was done scanning, but I guess it's not. Right, I'm going to let that finish before I break something. <laughs> I might have broke something. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, the Carfang quest has some nice items. I linked you one of them. The Tarnished Lancelot Ring. Let's see this ring. Um, improves chance to get critical strike by 1%, 3 health per 5, and 10 attack power. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, that's a really strong ring for, like, uh, mid-50s, uh, maybe pre-raid bis before you go looking for other rings. That's that's really good. Two agility as well. Um, people are talking about which which uh, races, if any, should be added to the horde. I think I think ogres do make the most sense. But because um I think there's there's like a, there's a lot of like logistical issues. There are some animations that need to be made. Um, and I say that because uh, has anyone ever done the uh, the tribute quest where you put on the costume to trick the ogres into thinking you're one of them? If you have, and the person who uses it is a hunter. They're shooting with a bow animation 
is really disturbing because they shoot arrows out of their stomach. <laughs> so, so there's animations missing, missing that they would have to put in, and I, I think animation's one of the more heavily difficult things to do in in vanilla wow that won't stop me from asking for a dance studio but as someone who once looked at putting gear on the ogre model i'd pass yeah if you think that's tough vazia you should see what uh hats look like on Torin. Um, so, so, uh, so, all right, uh, Koison, hi, by the way, uh, says, I feel like if Turtle Wow is making Outland, it's only a matter of time till Northrend already happens. Maybe the Tanuk Tanunka. Well, you must be a little bit new, I'm assuming. They already have a Tuscar in game. Um, we've done streams where we looked at him. If you're ever curious, if you're like, I think like, mid 30s high 40s go to this spot in darkshore and do the quest for the tuscar there and i think you'll find some interesting things no one spoil it for him because koisin you should definitely go do that i won't spoil it but we have done it on stream before as far as them making outland their conception of outland is going to be much different than I think what most people's conception of Outland is. And I say that not as someone who's like seen what they've been doing, but based on the storyline beats they're hitting, I'm going to assume that our exploration into Outland is going to be through like a raid. It's not going to be, oh, there's like a new town. Outland is a dangerous hellscape and I don't think they're going to make it like a new zone. They could make it a new zone, but if they do, they're not going to they're also not going to do what they did with TBC and make like five distinct oh, five or six different zones with an outland. I think it's mostly going to look like Hellfire Ramparts. Cuz the lore that is established in this canon is that uh Outlands is like a lifeless place. The Burning Legion has sucked all the life from it. According to Warcraft 3, that's the truth. According to other lore, that's the truth. There wasn't like a... Oh, and there's also like totally other living things. And there's like a marsh. And there's also like... Just happens to be a picturesque savanna zone. Like they don't... That's not. That was stuff they added. So I don't... I don't think it would look like that. Um... I always think the temptation is real because from a developer point of view, you have a bunch of models and assets you can take from other versions of WoW that would really cut down development time. But I don't think they like copying maps. They'll they'll gladly copy models, but I don't think they they would ever copy maps. They like making new maps and new zones, but like the examples we have of this is the stuff like Lapidus Isle. Gilajim Isle. Telebim. Um, the stuff they've done for dungeons and raids. Those are new instances with new zones. So they never shy away from making something new or different. So I don't think it's going to be like TBC's Outland at all. And remember, they're, they're doing more to expand in Azeroth than outside of Azeroth because like someone just mentioned here like um, the island of Baylor uh, and uh, Grimbatol they're they're expanding on what's already here and is already canon as far as Northrend I think that is so far down the pike for them it's not I don't think it's even fair to even speculate if you'd like to get as close to Northrend as you'd like though uh, Koisin, I would suggest you do that Tuscar quest. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> okay, I think 
think my script's done. Nope. Wow, it's still running. Oh, you know what? I think the website's slow right now. Or I'm using a lot of bandwidth. Normally, um, getting getting all the data for like one item usually takes like two seconds. I'm seeing like five and six seconds. It normally would be done by now. Oh, I can still, yeah, see it's still running. Uh, my buddy played on Baylor on a Crusader Kings 3 Warcraft mod. He was pretty hardcore light fanatic. I was playing as Mor uh, Morbent Fell and got my hands on Atiesh. Ooh, nice. Crusader, Cr Crusader Kings is a wild game. It is simultaneously the most boring and the most exciting game at times. Because a lot of the gameplay is very much like wait, nothing happens, arrange marriage. Uh-oh, I married my cousin. I got a disease. I, f I fought in a hunt. And then all of a sudden, you'll see like, oh, there's war. Oh, like half your royal court died. It, it can pop off. But, um, at times my attention span fails me and I, I cannot... I don't think I've ever finished a playthrough of Crusader Kings. I can get into it, but I can't I can't get through like a full game. I respect those who can though. Uh yeah, Koison. I, I I would say w the things we're most likely to get I I mean, they've announced a lot through the um the roadmap announcement they had a while back. You can see what they're planning on doing. Pretty much, your best indication of is it is it something they're working on is does it exist on this map? Like like literally, like hey look, there's a, you know, there's a zone that doesn't exist. It's going it they're going to work on it. I think is that Northrend? Is that where they think Northrend is? I I don't know. But like that's that's part 1. Right. And the other part is things that have like entrances and were never done. That's why we got Hyjal and we got Emerald Sanctum. If you go to Tenaris and you see the gates to whatever that place is behind Tenaris, like that's something they've already done something with. They have uh, Austerius guarding it now. Uldum, thank you. I, I The weird thing about Uldum is that like, I'm always thinking that it's not Uldum because we have Uldaman. What is the difference between Uldum and Uldaman? Can someone explain it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Koisin. Is it a Warcraft zone? That's probably your best point of reference. Oh, I, I realize I asked a lore. We have a bit of a lore smith with us. Durga in here knows quite a bit about the lore, and I asked a very dwarf related question, so we might actually know. I, I guess I guess my point of curiosity is there's Uldum and Uldaman, which is also a like a Titany place with like the, the makers and all that. Just they have very similar names. Um but yeah, I think they want to make Uldum a raid at some point. I'm not sure if that was in the roadmap, but uh Old is basically an identifier for Titan facilities, like Ulduar, Uldum, Uldaman. Okay, hold on. Durgar says, Uldaman is the origin, the origin site of the dwarves. They hibernated there to avoid the curse of flesh, but evolved into mortals during hi the hibernation. Okay, so specifically Uldaman is where the dwarves sprang from. So... Oh, I think according to lore, there's three races that came from uh like the stone people it was dwarfs gnomes and not humans or maybe it was humans i think in later lore they changed it but <laughs> sorry <laughs> alessandra says what about older woman thank you so they did call them uh right cool 
back then. I, I know I watched a Platinum WoW's video about the Vrykul, but I didn't know if, like, they initially called them Vrykul, like, in the, in the initial lore, or if they later changed it to fit a narrative for uh, Wrath of the Lich King. And yes, Trogs. Really, Trogs were also, like, the, the stone people as well? That's wild. So they, they were just different facilities. All right. <laughs> Thalaria, careful. That that might be fighting words. Thalaria says trogs were dwarves. Is that... Wait, that, that can't be true. Like, when we say elves were trolls, that is true. <laughs> so they became so the trogs came before dwarves but they were cannibalistic and were locked away in the depths of the world all right but they got out frishes it might be true or trogs were prototypes of dwarves i mean <laughs> I always find it interesting that um, usually in most banter about the different races of Azeroth, I, I don't know what it is about dwarves, but dwarves seem to get the most sympathy from the horde and the most welcome. Is it because their model isn't pretty? Or is it because dwarves are just, just amazing? I don't know. <laughs> Channeler, dwarves are earthen with good genes. Okay, all right. <laughs> you, you know, you know. Uh, Durkan says we literally displaced an entire tribe of Torin to dig for shards of pottery. And you know, if you guys weren't such jerks about it, you might have been welcome in the horde. But you got to admit, Torin, Torin are pretty nice too. Um, has anyone seen, um, oh man, uh, YouTube creator Moronic Minds, he put out a video that was opening race cutscenes if they were, if they were accurate. If you haven't seen it, you should go see it. I don't know what the rules and regulations are for, like, a YouTube stream watching a YouTube video. But this is as close to me thinking that I should. Also, it looks like the uh, script's done running. So I'm going to try doing that uh, thing again. All right. Get that up. We'll get rid of this. Get rid of that. All right. We'll go to Market Watch. Web Interface. Herbalism. We're gonna do two weeks. Done. Generate that graph. Graph generation is done. Let's take a look. All right. Oh, that didn't actually change much. Okay, let's see if I can let stream see it. Okay, that is unlocked, so we will do this a little bit. Sorry. All right. Thalaria, here is here's the chart you wanted to see. There's actually been a drop off as of recently. Uh, first drop off in quite a while. I'm not sure what's going on. I could I could look deeper, but uh, it's still trending up. 
if anyone else has any any requests for uh, charts or graphs, something they're curious about, I I'm, I could happily oblige you. Uh, also, a reminder to to any oil princes in chat. Uh, I do have my. Oh, has he been working? Hold on, wait. I haven't seen. Has my command been working? Hold on. Uptime. Does that does that work still? Or tip? Okay, okay. Oh, well, apparently I've been live for offline. I don't know how that works. If we do tip, does tip work? <laughs> I know. Yeah, Streamlabs, really great service, everyone. I don't think... Okay, yes. So um, I do have my Streamlabs donation link working. The reason I point this out, though, is because some people want to keep their anonymity when they when they uh uh donate to stream and i i'm pretty sure there's an option to keep your donation anonymous i respect and understand people in the private server community want to when they want to keep a low profile for whatever reason that's fine so that's working and super chats are enabled too for all for all the oil princes out there you want to buy want to buy daddy vrograg like a new car or something i'm here for it <laughs> oh cool we have a rando hello friend you're welcome to join us crack a cold one and catch some fish I can't help you, friend, with an alliance bank, sadly. The cheek? Oh, yeah. I guess if we have a tent up, we're going to get randos. For sure. We don't... Although, I will say, that's a really cool-looking pole arm. Is that a pole arm or a staff? That's a, that's a nice-looking weapon, though. Thank you, Channel Lurker. Yeah, that's true. If you donate too much, I, I, I will be irresponsible. <laughs> Evidently. I don't remember drinking myself blackout drunk, but I guess that's because I was blackout. Oh, okay. Koisin says that is the Silvermoon friendly rep staff. Okay. I didn't know. No way, really, Durgan? You got you you got headmaster's charge while blacked out. <laughs> well, you have it um hammered on. Oh, okay. In game, in game. Gotcha, gotcha. Although I will say it's nice. Headmaster's charge actually gives party members twenty int. It's not. I mean, you are going to nerf your damage, but um. <laughs> okay, you, I, and IRL. Oh, damn. So, um... Does anyone... I, I have something I want to talk about. I don't even think Dragonovi is here right now. But I want to take Dragonovi to task about something that I discovered. And... This is super niche knowledge. But it's something I want to bring up for a very specific reason. You guys know that leather workers have specializations, right? This is what I call oh. dedication. Thank you, uh, Kalyan. Uh, donated ten dollars. I think that was through. Huh? It didn't give me that notification. Well, something's messed up with notifications. But you did see the little thing pop up. So when you donate, it, it will pop up with little gif of Bulbasaur, who is my best boy. But uh. <laughs> I can't check. I don't think, uh, Mandalore's not around. I think he's asleep in the other room. So I can't, I can't get, I could get cat cam on, but cat cam won't have a cat. Sadly.
Alessandro, by the way, coming in with dwarves and gnomes are close to actual monster races. They pose in the lower half of the human beast spectrum. I'd put stuff like Torns at the end of it and humans at the other end. Wow. You know, you know what I would say? Why is your spectrum human based? Why are they the default? When the most patently native race to Azeroth should be troll. They weren't they, they they are like literally the most native thing. Like they came from Azeroth's life force. The dwarves, humans, gnomes were created by Titans for a specific purpose. They aren't like a result of Azeroth. They were like a result of things messing with Azeroth. The elves are mutant trolls. We know this. I don't know what goblins are. Someone can maybe explain that one. Torin, likewise, are also very much native, but had some amount of tinkering done by Dru by Cenarius, I think. Or some kind of druidic thing happened with them. Trolls are trolls. I think should be like the template for a native of Azeroth, because they are they are the most natively Azerothian thing. I I will hear other arguments, of course. But I think the scale should be on how close you are to a troll. Elves, elves are closer to trolls than humans. Humans, dwarves, and gnomes are not even close. Maybe it's a bad scale. <laughs> Orcs, of course, are, are the aliens. They are the resident aliens. Um, we talk about in future expansions, right? Like in TBC. Draenei are space goats, but but the orcs are actually from another world. I mean, they they make it work here, but all right. Channel lurker says, N no no coison. You it's the other way around. Night elves came from trolls. Believe it or not, that that is actually true. Um, Channel lurker says goblins were lesser species like gnolls and kobolds, but became smart due to Kajamite, allegedly? I don't know. I don't know the lore around that. Okay. So so they they were sort of like a kind of like on the fur bulg kind of scale. They were like kind of almost to being like a, a pull. I mean, to be perfectly honest, right? There are races that are like sentient, but have no real political power so you know they're just seen as as like tribes people L like the fur bulgs so usually to to become like a a race in wow you need to have some sort of a a political structure or unifying force to to make your race something more than just scattered tribes existing All right, so Koisin says the trolls enslaved goblins, which early trolls, I think, just enslaved everything. Essentially, if you could be enslaved, they you would be enslaved by a troll. Like, early, early Azeroth history. Frisch is, is talking about how strong the goblin trade empire is. I mean... Trade is an important part of any, you know, national identity. <laughs> oh my god, what happened to my grammar? I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, you gave me int, it'll help. I don't think, uh, Vazia, you can't unless we're grouped. Hold on. Here. It's because I'm horde. There, now, now you can give me int. Will it help? Probably not.
Oh, Koisin reminds me it only works for weapon skill. But I am using a fishing rod. So... I mean, that's like a weapon. <laughs> Dirk, and, Dirk and reminds us, Knowles might be scattered bunch of savages, but remember, they once held Stormwind to siege. That's true. And um, the Darkspear tribe, I think, was in a scattered situation because of Murlocs. <laughs> yes, I gain more crit if I attach a fishing lure to a fishing rod. I'm trying to... Have I caught anything other than... It has just been... Raw longjaw mud snappers and bristle whisker catfish. Oh, oh no, nope, that's... I didn't catch that. That's just a trinket. Okay. No, no, so my fishing started here. So it, this is all, everything I caught. Any offhands? Oh, we got an offhand. A 22 pounder. I could show it off to everyone. Hold on. Take a look. Take a look. You guys like my fish? Take a look at that. You get a 22 pounder? Bet you didn't. I did it because I'm smart. That's a, yeah, that is a big one. You're right. Hold on. Look at the detail on that fish. It has a odd amount of luster to it. Oh, we have another, another big fish, fish catcher. I think mine looks bigger because everything gets upscaled when you uh, do stuff on the models. So, like, if we had a Torn, their fish would be biggest, I bet. Although, I think yours is smaller, right? Th thank you, St. Simon. I appreciate you saying that. Everyone wave hi to St. Simon. Uh, exactly. A tor if a Torn had that fish in their offhand, it would look like they had a shark. Which, that brings up a good point, Durgan. At some point for one of these fishing chats, we should go, like, spear fishing for sharks. There are many sharks added in the game. There, I know there's one off the coast of uh, Duratar, and there's fish off the coast of Telebim. Yeah, but I mean, look uh, look at us. We're, we're all a bunch of fearsome fishers. We, we could probably handle it. I know I probably could. I, I would actually think f a female tauren and a male orc are like similar in size, but a male tauren is just at like another level. I actually feel bad for male Torrens. There are some raid encounters that are just actually more difficult for them because of their hitbox. If you, if anyone's done Nax and knows about the Hagen and the safety dance, it is very difficult to not die because of the safety dance due to your hitbox size. It is actually a problem. It, uh, there is a, well, Riddle, I don't know if, that shark isn't a world boss, right? That's part of the scepter quest. And it's the part for the blue gem, if I remember. That would be a really fun event, though, where if I try to get everyone from Fish and Chat try to help me kill the big shark you get from the Arcanite buoy, that would be fun. Because, I mean, that's about as big of a fish as you're going to find in the game. And yes, uh, Soul Core says use Noggin Fogger. That's true. That's pretty much what you have to do. You have to use Noggin Fogger as a... Uh, as a torrent. You could be a, um, uh, a, what, a gnome engineer, and you can use the world enlarger, which shrinks you. That is an, that's an option to make your, your box size smaller. Thalaria, I wish you could plane stride indoors. You cannot, sadly. But plane striding... The dance would be really hilarious. It's actually prob it would probably be dangerous because um I don't see a lot of Torin here, but maybe people do have experience with Torrens. If you do plane striding, it isn't like a you click a button and you're up to full mount speed. You actually have to build up to full mount speed by moving. And if you stop moving, you lose 
charges essentially. So if you were able to use that in raid, it would be really hard to predict how fast you're going. And I believe any combat or spell will will cancel it. Um, no, plane striding works essentially at mount levels. So when you're level 40, you can get the first form of plane striding, but you need the first form of mounting, even though you don't mount. And then when you are level 60, you can get epic riding, and then you can do the the fastest plane striding there is, which for some reason is still slower than epic mount, but I, I digress. I have, if anyone wants to know, uh, I can't take full credit. I just know I was one of the voices uh, yelling at the team that like, hey, d did you know plane striding at max level is slower than like an unmodified epic mount? It, it's just straight up slower. And none of the ride speed increasing things like carrot on a stick, goblin car keys, none of that will increase your, your plane striding speed. Um... You st yeah, there's a dude in Mulgore you get the quest from, and then Samantha Swifthoof in Stranglethorn Vale will guide you through the rest. You need, like, materials, and she'll teach you how to do plane shriding. Hello, Bernardo. Yes, you can plane shride as a moonkin, you can plane shride as a tree, and... If you're a shaman, you can plane stride over water, which is literally the reason I wanted to make that a thing. I'm, I'm not even joking when I'm like, oh, plane striding over water seems so cool. I should make a tour in shaman. And that was like a year plus ago when I had that thought. And now it's my main. <laughs> Why wasn't I born fast? I don't know. Oh, speaking of which, Riddle's, Riddle's here, by the way. Riddle, our, our fabulous, uh, <laughs> I, I would say in-house. There's not a house. It's like in, in shack. Um, he made a bunch of doodles, uh, yesterday. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, da -da. I'll try saving some of these. Uh. Just bear with me a moment. Your slideshow? No, we don't want that. I should just have a folder with um, Riddle's Doodles. <laughs> Save that. I know Stream likes the uh, the doodles he puts up. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I am I am preparing essentially a slideshow for you. You'll like it. Trust me. here and then of course showing showing pictures through stream labs is just like unreasonably annoying i don't know why it just it just likes doing that to me um i you know <laughs> i don't think they're ready for for to for Tertulu. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. But I should spread the word of Terthulu. Uh, enter and okay. Um, sorry. Now I can look back at uh, stream again. I don't want to link this size chart without Vrograx British. You can try linking stuff, but I think my chat just disables links. I think only mods can put links. If you want, you can DM me on Discord at Vrograg. I can take a look at it. <laughs> uh, 
I'll, t I'll take a look. Give me a second here. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at what uh, Riddle, Riddle of Lightning, has cooked up. Uh, open that, and I will go here and change this to this, and turn on. All right, we won't start with that one. We'll start with, actually, you know, we will start with this one. Um. So, for those who don't know, there used to be a long time ago on the server something known as uh, Terthulu, which is like a Cthulhu-based turtle boss. No longer available, but he does exist. And I think Riddle of Lightning took some creative liter liberties, maybe didn't know what Terthulu was, and just made Turkthulu. So this is a this is a Cthulhu as a turkey. You'll love to see it. Um, shout outs to uh, Tank, who was educating people about Turthulu. Uh, this also, I think, is... Uh, I think this is more to do with Akalix. But this could also be Turthulu. Anytime I see the Cthulhu, I always think Akalix. And let's see what else we got. Uh, this is it, the the first art. I, this is the one like I I actually asked Riddle to make. I'm like, you know, I'm feeling emotionally bankrupt right now. I I can't really make a thumbnail. I'm like, if you could just make a thumbnail, like Vrograg's like drinking and fishing. Maybe there's a radio, and I'm just relaxing. This is what it came up with. This is great work. Bulbasaur will not eat me until I die, and then I will become nutrients for Bulbasaur. And I'm okay with that. But we work together, Bulbasaur and I. This is, uh, <laughs> Riddle trying to cheer me up. I would say if I was buried in Bulbasaur's like this, I don't think I could be upset. Um, and... And may maybe one day the Bulbasaur's will revolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bulbasaur is ready to speed up that process. Absolutely. Uh, and the, of course, there's there's Vrograg on uh, Nefarian's throne, doing important news stuff. And there was there was another one. I just I didn't have it in there. Uh, I think I, if anyone wants to see it, if you have access to the Turtle Wow Discord, um, I linked it. As one of the images for the stream, it's Vrograg riding a uh, a devil sore <laughs> in Ungoro. Oh, we have a we have a haunter lover. Love to see it. I wonder if I think I might have showed it off one time. It's been a while since I showed it off. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't know. I just you probably know I like Bulbasaur. But I have, um, where was it? Under show and tell? No, it's not under show and tell. I have some pictures. Hold on, let me see. I'm pretty sure I can show this off. I have a, a bit of a, a Bulbasaur shrine, you could say. There's, there's my Bulbasaur shrine of all my Bulbasaur things I have. I have more than this, and there's actually a, a new addition to the collection. Um, for Christmas, it was a late Christmas gift. Pretty late, you might say, but um, someone in my family found... I don't know if it was online or it was like at like a flea market. I'm actually... Oh, sorry, that's a motorcycle outside. Um, someone found at a flea market... Or maybe might have been Etsy. Someone got me like a an amethyst Bulbasaur, so it's like a purple gemstone. Uh, yeah, that uh, the Bulbasaur on top there, this one, this is Swolbasaur. He's on an exercise bike. Um, this is like, I think like a knockoff one, but it looks so derpy. I had to keep it. Uh, this one over here is like a three D. 
these these two this is a glow in the dark 3d printed one that's also 3d printed that's just a deck protector um there's other statuettes someone did like perler beads for one uh, that's a patch that i haven't attached to anything that's like a terry cloth one corduroy regular i don't really care about funko pops but i like bulbasaur people got me a couple like the i think these two are the same so uh knock off lego one another statuette that, that's what i have but there is more i haven't that i took that picture like maybe half a year ago all right let's see here eh, we've been we've been fishing for we've been fishing for a little bit i think it might be time for a little walkabout um let's see what do we have anyone who's low level or hardcore with us we got to be careful um zaint you you could maybe come but be careful i was thinking we should go check out what's going on over at stonewatch keep if uh people want to get on their uh their battle garb i'll get on my my sword dps set <laughs> even though i think currently i'm in a tank spec Oh, good, homie. We're going on a patrol. We'll call it patrol. It sounds more official. To the keep. And I need to get on a mount. That is a little bit more RP friendly. There it is. All right. I didn't know it rained in Red Ridge. I could say that. I, I don't think I ever remember it raining here. I would never eat Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is like also like 50% plant, 50% frog thing. And I don't, and plants can be appetizing, but more often than not, they're poisonous. So I probably wouldn't eat that. And frogs are a delicacy to some, but I don't think I would eat that. <laughs> um, Yeah, I, I guess you could plant a Bulbasaur. I think the actual translation of its name is like Miracle Seed or something. So I would imagine you could. You're all you're all good, Koyasin. I I just I just like going a little walkabout adventure. Just to, just to take a little uh a little a little poke, a little prod, a little look see about what's going on. A lot of times there's zones that people don't really pay attention to, myself included, and there's uh there's a lot of stuff to kind of discover. I think last time we did a walkabout we were <laughs> we fell into like a hidden balcony in uh in undercity and we're checking that out uh by the way koison you got to admit you're impressed that i that i knew the name meant miracle seed huh N that's how you know i'm a real fan i actually bothered to know what it meant in japanese Yeah, that's that's the check. You're not a real fan of Bulbasaur. Oh, um, if anyone else wants, uh, let me get some more invites out. I should probably switch over to a raid. There you go. Uh, I don't think Thalaria's in. Wise Beard, I'll get you in too. I only realized there's only certain members in, of the party here because uh, we were getting the Brilliance Aura from, uh, that must be Vazia, yeah. If someone else isn't in the group, let me know, I'll get you. Well, I think uh, Riddle Pally's along for the ride. We'll get you in. Zaint, I would, l if you're not hardcore, no, you're not hardcore. That's more so the healers can maybe try to save your life if you need it. 
Uh, let's see. Who would like the aura? Probably group should look something like this. Uh, physical damage on one side, and I don't know what this particular paladin does. Okay. I, I appreciate that same, but don't worry. We have a lot of reses here. Well, we have one and I'm an engineer. So that's like one and a half reses. Riddle Pally draws. That is that, that's the new meta. Yeah. Now I know, now I know who your, uh, your tune is on, uh, Nordnar. R Riddle's played on, um, Telebim. Has some horror stories from Telebim. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do, Koisin. I do. I have uh, pretty much every generation from first through fifth generation. I should have all the cartridges still. Or I, I even have... Uh, I guess if the DS ones are called cartridges, I have those too. That's all good, Bernardo. And, you know, real life does actually matter sometimes. As much as I hate to admit it. I do know the cartridges um, for the older generations are, are worth some money. Some of them are worth a lot, but I think part of that is because the people that have them are attached to them, you know? I have probably the one thing in my video game collection I'd never get rid of is a um, I have an earthbound cartridge which is probably my favorite uh, my favorite like RPG I ever played I, I'm yeah I'm one of those earthbound fans too I love earthbound I've played uh, mother 3 as well And for how much I like Bulbasaur, I, I should probably make some amount of Pokemon content. It's just, there's just, like, there's so many different ways to play Pokemon nowadays. I'm gonna dismount after we get after the bridge. <laughs> we, we seen, like, some of the original, uh, Pokemon design is weird, and it's changed a lot over time. Um, if any of you like interesting Pokemon content. I would suggest a uh, content creator called Big Yellow. I watch a lot of uh, their stuff. They do content about competitive, like Smogon Pokemon, like in the metagame of that. But the thing is, is like, I don't even play it. I just find the way that they um, sort of present it very fascinating. Cause it's just, I could never imagine playing that way. But it has a really interesting meta game, all of its own. Um, I have not tried Poke. I think I did try Pokemon MMO like way long ago. I think it's pretty old. Um, all right. Well, they just left the door open. Oh, I said that. <laughs> a shadow caster just appeared in front of me. So it looks like the Black Rock Clan wrecked up the place. All right, one side's all collapsed, so we got to go this way. Sorry if my model disappears. I've been having this weird client issue. I don't know why it happens. I'll appear again soon. Scarfate, love to see you also in Tier 3. Tier 3 is beautiful for, for rogues. Oh, what? They take over this building in the quote-unquote non-canon... I guess it is not canon, right? Uh, Warcraft movie. Oh, okay. I, I'm i sorry, did someone kill all of the orcs first? I was under the impression there would be like black rock orcs here. Um, I think to the right goes to the roof and this goes to the, like the central chamber, right? Most of the fortresses are set up the same way. Yeah, I, 
wow. Okay, yeah, I think uh, someone's been here. <laughs> Gathelzog? That is a very orky name. Ooh, we had a we had a music change. Was this song in vanilla? Riddle <laughs> Riddle, I should bane you just for that. <laughs> huh. Yeah, it probably is vanilla fixes, but since I have a caster, I really need the casting speed help. Huh. Yeah, I guess you don't hear this song very often. Free food. Wait, what? No. <laughs> Scarfade and Riddle can, can do whatever RP they're into over there. We can go check out the, the roof section at least. Uh, yeah, I use Nam Power and uh, and Vanilla Fixes. I'd never wanted to or needed to use them until I had a caster, um, because the the ping you get plus or minus for melee doesn't really matter. But for casters, it really does for your uptime. I can make my model reappear by opening and closing my bags. I don't know why. There it is. Interesting. Hmm. Well, this is interesting, but I'm immediately... How high up can we get on this? We haven't done any parkour in a minute. <laughs> can we do the corner hop? Nope. Oh, wait, maybe you can. No, I don't think you can get very far up. All right. I don't know. Can we, can we live that fall? We can live that fall, right? I know I can as a rogue. I just don't know if everyone else can. As I have that, that passive that reduces my fall. Okay, everyone seems all right. Riddle took no, no chances. No, oh, I see the orcs are respawning. Oh, try to, oh no, he's just dead. Okay, there's a there's a team here, a sixty and a lobby. Uh, I don't doubt it, Koisin. I mean, like, um, I never felt the need to like. I guess the best way of putting it is that with a rogue, like you do competent levels of DPS, but as a uh as an elemental shaman you're really behind the curve for like trying to do competent levels of dps so i wanted to like get every advantage i could so that's why i don't doubt that you get better damage with uh those modifications even on rogue but for elemental shaman it felt more necessary if that makes sense yeah, my uh, my ping is. Uh, where is it? No, that's memory usage. What the heck? What? That's show ping, right? Uh, latency 89, 89. So that's not bad. I also live east coast, so if you're not east coast, you probably have a little bit further for the signal to travel. It's probably more impactful. Yeah. <laughs> Zane, I feel like this party's missing a big, a beefy Torin boy. I'm gonna find y'all on my main. Be right back. All right, all right. Uh, so we checked out Stonewatch Keep. We, oh, let's go to the tower. We're. Oh wait, can we go to the tower from here? Sorry. Is it? Uh, do Do we need to walk down? Yeah, cause I don't want to get like stuck in all that. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Frish. I knew I, I knew I missed someone. Oh, we can, we can scale this. This isn't bad. Oh, I'll get my mount back out too.
even though walking slower, sometimes I, I literally think it makes you interact with the terrain differently. It, like, makes you look at the world a little... And I did it in a different light, you know? Also, Scarfate, you have an undead mount? What mount is that? That must be Storm Mount then, right? Because I don't think you've got enough Undercity rep. <laughs> yeah. It's a good look. Let's see, Duragan is riding... Uh, that's uh, some kind of demon unicorn. Probably a shop mount. Riddle has the paladin mount, looks like. The non-epic one. Uh, Frisch is riding around in the goblin pod racer. Alright, we'll have to jump from here. If you jump well, you can make it actually to the uh, to the water, not take damage. <laughs> yeah, I I heard the I don't think I'll ever get a spectral tiger, but um, and they're also I know the spectral tigers never get discounts, like even when there's sales. All right, so we gotta swing up to the to the left here, north. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, um, I know uh, it's a... Uh, I think it's more... Uh, you'll see a lot of Chinese players on the, the the Spectral Tiger Mount. I think that has a lot to do with culturally how they look at, like, both displaying wealth and their previous conceptions about how private servers work uh, that's a whole nother ball of wax but that's usually who i see them on who like who i see players on them um before there weren't many players that even had them and oftentimes people kind of laugh at you for having them but now, to be perfectly honest uh the way i normally do donations and i only encourage people to do donations to the server if it's something they can afford and something they think's worthwhile and they'll be here for a while but um since i have a good amount of disdain for blizzard i try to structure it more like a blizzard thing so i'll just like donate like 15 bucks once a month and just uh so i'll have like points that i just don't spend on stuff so i think at some point i'll run out of other things to buy i think if we go up that way is that gonna work I, I don't have this on my map, so. Yeah. It, I think um, the the gaming culture in China is a lot different. RMT and... Uh, what's that other word I'm looking for? Like uh, microtransactions are much more acceptable and like... Uh, just like normalized so it's not that big of a deal for them to do that I think that's a lot more why the you'll see them on spectral tigers a lot I really hate microtransactions like quite a bit it's like a plague on the gate community I, I definitely think developers should get paid but the second you start doing that it I mean, I don't know if anyone here is old enough. I'm barely just old enough. But if you're old enough to remember the arcade scene of, like, the mid to late 80s, um, all of those were just essentially what we're working ourselves back towards, where you just put in money to play the game more. And I feel like corporations are trying to be slick and trying to get us back to that. <laughs> um, uh, Bella CL, I think someone just said it's uh, 200 uh, American dollars, I think, roughly. And it, and it doesn't ever get discounted. Yeah. 
that that is, and that is a pretty big chunk of money. Yeah, I mean, between games not being finished and then you need to buy more of the actual finished product, games coming out incomplete but being like, oh, it's in it's in beta, but it's like in beta forever. And overall, pay to win games, it it just really ugh. And I say this as someone who, I, I wasn't like, I was way too young, but like, I never understood people just sitting at like some kind of an adventure game at an arcade, just throwing quarters in after quarter, trying to beat the game. And like, if you had a bunch of quarters, you could beat any game there. If you had just like a bunch of money, you could just beat any game. If it was a game you could beat, I suppose. But yeah, it, it also, it was, it was, it, it is a little bit apples and oranges because there's like a social aspect to the arcade scene. You would be there with other people, right? You'd want to take turns. Um, you know, the polite thing to do if you want to have your turn on arcade box is you would put your quarter uh, on the, on like a, not visually obstructing, but you put your quarter on like the actual box somewhere to let someone know you wanted next play. Um, yeah, it, it was a definitely a different thing altogether. Ooh, there's a chest here. Let's see if there's anything good. Thank you, Wisebeard. I'll take it from here. Sorry, I'm RPing a rogue. You can't you can't stop me. Um Ridge Cleaver of the Whale. Pretty cute. Brocade pants. I think I have those. I'll just take that. You guys can have it. I'm I want to have this picture up forever. Look, guys, it's Rograg with an axe. Look, guys, it's real. Oh, one day. Ooh, another another music change. I don't I don't think it's gonna happen, Koisin. There are a lot, and I say this as someone who wants rogues for a lot of different reasons to have access. I just don't think it's going to happen because the way the itemization is for one-handed axes, there's a lot of things that would be hard to balance with rogues. I'm not saying it's not worth the trouble because it is. Ooh, there was a... What? I haven't done this area in so long. There's like a little patchwork here. Uh... I was going to try pickpocket in him. I don't think he has anything useful, though. Wizard battle. Nicely done. Nicely done. Okay, you know what? You just reminded me, because you said wizard battle. Hold on. All right. Hey, everyone, gra grab a seat. Grab a seat. I have a presentation. <laughs> this is a very important presentation. And by important, I mean not really important, but it's important to me. And I want people, I want people to hear of what happened. So... I know I brought this up and I didn't finish the thought, but I'm going to finish the thought now. So, leatherworking, right? We all know leatherworking. There are three different specializations. There's tribal, there's elemental, and there's dragon scale. Does anyone know what, what, what like good things tribal can do? Let's see if anyone knows. It, this isn't a quiz as much as it's a... Uh, Uh, just just to see where you got. Uh, yeah, hide of the wild. Yep, hide of the wild. Devil sword. That's right. Okay. Does anyone know what elemental can do? Makes you look like a savage. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yep, exactly. Uh, there are. I I will say elemental goodies for elemental shaman. It's more like resistance pieces. And the Convergence set, thank you, Muho Momo, Mono. I don't know who you are, but I, I think that's true. Okay, let me... Oh, they don't show the set bonuses. Uh, okay. Hmm. Let me see. All right, let me, just, let me just reveal to you this first thing, all right? 
Dragon Scale Leatherworking has something that is very useful, known as the Red Dragon Scale set. They added it to Turtle WoW. It's a really good pre raid bis healing item. They have even had to nerf it at a certain point because it gave a hot that was a little too strong. Just a little too strong. Let me see if I can reveal this. But why aren't, why aren't you showing? You should show. Don't be, don't be shy. Okay. All right. So here we have blue dragon scale set. And you're thinking, eh? Right? And it is kind of a, a mess set, right? Take a look, though. Take a look at this. They added... See, there's a set bonus. There's actually four pieces. You see, uh, the uh, database doesn't show this. But now there's a fourth piece. The fourth piece was the boots. Now, I happened to get the, the, the boots just recently. And because of that, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll make the set on Obomb Swim. Now, what does the set bonus do? I do not have... Muho Mono, thank you very much. You're really helping the presentation here. Uh, who also said that they are Khoisan. Okay, take a look. Behold. Now you're looking at that and you're going, wait a second, wait a second. Uh, for those who can't read it, the four set bonus says, chance on landing a damaging spell to deal 75 to 85 arcane damage and increase the target's arcane damage taken by 10 for 15 seconds. This stacks up to three times. Now, most of the set looks like this. It's Int, Arcane Resist. It's a male set, so it's really only good for Elemental Shaman, right? Because Boomkins can't wear this. And it has some amount of uh, damage and healing. And the gear, like, it's like kind of like you might want to use this maybe through BWL. Some of your tier two pieces might knock it off. There's other good set pieces. So you'd probably use this into BWL, right? But this four set bonus, I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, arcane damage. Who does arcane damage? There are two classes in the game that really excel arcane damage. That's mage and boomkin. But uh, boomkin, there's usually not a lot of them. And mages rarely go arcane, right? So I had a plan. My plan was I was going to make this set on a bomb one, right? And here's something you may or may not know. If you've done Emerald Sanctum, uh, for those that don't know Emerald Sanctum, there is a couple couple green dragon bosses in there. Uh, Aranius? Is it? Oh, boy, I can't spell that name. Thank you. Er... Er... Uh, yes? Why can't I spell the name of Aranius? Does anyone know how to spell that? E-R-E? Era... Era? NBC's... <laughs> it's not Stitches. It's not Patchwork. It's, it's the off-brand version. Thank you. Um, once again, uh, Koisen is helping my presentation because I didn't prepare for it, but I, I want to talk about it. I will spell this correctly now. Era and N I U S. Okay. NPCs. All right. Um, well, it doesn't show much about this guy, but I can at least show this. All right. Uh, here's the stats on uh, Uranius, right there. He does some damage, right? He has some nature resist. Uh-oh, that's tough for shamans. Shadow resist. Uh-oh, tough for shadow priests and warlocks. But, and he, dro he drops some okay stuff, right? Uh, there's another boss in there, too. Now, here's the thing. Both of them do things to casters that affect casting speed. Strong anti-venom. I already know this. Now, what if I told you arcane missiles is not cast? Because it's not. Uh, Wisebeard, I know your arcane spec, and I think Durgar might be as well. Next time you see an enemy, go ahead, show it off. It's a channel. 
And guess what? Casting speed does not get nerfed by casting speed debuffs. So what that means is actually, if you're a mage, your best chance to do damage when you get all those debuffs is actually arcane. So I encouraged all the mages in my Emerald Sanctum group, guys, everyone go arcane. I have a plan. It involves blue dragon skill leggings, right? Now, let, let me tell you how this went. I used... Because uh, to apply this with a shaman, you need to still cast a spell. I was casting rank 1 lightning bolts because of the casting speed debuff, so I could keep up this debuff. This Having this at 3 stacks, it takes the 30 damage you would get and splits it across the 5 different missiles. It, it made, like, no difference. So this is why this is why I'm annoyed. Arcane is such a bad damage type as it is. I finally found a spot where it could be good and still this set does nothing. Nothing interesting, not even remotely good. Do you know how many cure rugged hides I used to make this? Do you know how many blue dragon scales I had to scrounge together to make this set? I did all that for for nothing. Essentially nothing. Now it is essentially I have a blue transmog on a bomb swan. That that is what got me riled up. That uh Dragon Ovi, if you see this, or if you're anyone on the dev team, just make this better. You made the red dragon scale set, which requires even harder to get scales, similar amounts of materials. So good it had to be nerfed. This is just bad. This is bad for everyone. And it doesn't help any. It like, and what does dragon scale leatherworking even have? We don't. We don't have hide of the wild. We have maybe red dragon scale leatherworking. Not that good. Okay, my TED talk's done. <laughs> Th thank you. Thank you for uh, obliging me with that. Oh, hey, hot stepper. What's up? Also, lovely transmog. I think those shoulder. Hold on. Look at you in. Ooh, a shield? I don't know about that. I don't know if they should or can inspect. Are those shoulders? So those uh, shoulders look just like the red dragon hide shoulders. Looks like you are set up to heal. Nope, you're here to kill stuff in melee. Nice. Sorry. I, I like like literally it it I just didn't understand why they made it so bad. Do you know how hard it was to like I literally have been farming just to get that recipe for so long. I'm like, oh man, I'll get the four set, it'll be so cool. Total letdown. It's like super rare off of um certain dragons in Mazarthil and Winterspring. And everyone who was in that Emerald Sanctum uh raid were there for me when I was like crestfallen when it did like nothing. Does anyone know the lore on what's going on in this tower? We had like a wizard guy up there making undead things. D Durgan, I'm not surprised that you know the lore. Because I feel like the only way you get to have an abomination that looks like stitches is uh, if you have some sort of teamwork with uh, Scourge. Oh, no one grabbed the chest? Someone should grab the chest. Wear the axe that I can't wear. Because the devs hate rogues. <laughs> yes, Riddle. Become rich. Yeah, if you want Dur Durgan, you can tell me lore and you can put me on follow. I, I won't run a pick and roll on you. He's madly typing, I can tell. Alright. I have I have the dwarf on follow. The dark iron dwarf. Okay. Interesting. So Independent necromages exist. All right. 
Morbent Fell isn't Scourge aligned either. So they're just using necromancy as a means to an end. Not surprising. What's over here? Render's Valley? Anyone else see that? I'm gonna check that out. I can't mount here? What are you talking about? I'm outside. Anyone else getting this issue? How far how far away do I just try to mount? Yeah, the advantage of having uh paladins able to What is going on? Why won't it let me mount? We're in the dome? Whoa, whoa, on the map it Okay, now I'm outside. That's a very big indoor area. All right, so Durkan says, so the guy upstairs, Morganth, was one of three, I think, mages from Stormwind. The other is in the Tower of Azora. The other remains in Stormwind. Morganth has gone off the deep end, a typical power-hungry wizard trope. Okay. So he, he was part of uh, Stormwind. By the way, I, I just want to check out what's over here. You see how there's kind of like a... a f it looks like a flat area. There's got to be something up there, right? It says Render's Valley. Thank you, thank you, Durgan, for the lore explanation. Oh, Riddle has the Cow King hide. Nice. That whole area is Render's Valley. So when I mouse over here, it says Galar Del Valley. Stone. Oh, okay. I guess I see what you mean. I think there's a vendor NPC up. Okay. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of conspiracy theorists say that they think that you can summon the cow boss, but you need the cow king high first. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty lazy writing, if I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Riddle. There is no cow level. We would know if there was. And if you see pictures telling you otherwise, it's a, it's a joke. Don't go looking for it. And that's not true, uh, Muho. Um, it drops from uh, bosses. Like, like literally, Cow King Hide can drop from Oni. That That's... And people are using that to, sh to say, oh, the cow, the cow level exists. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the first time Atlas loot lies. Um, but uh, literally, I, I almost went on a roll when I didn't Oni recently. Oh, did we, uh... What's going on here? Is this a guild base? I can't really talk to them for PvP. Are these NPC a leather armor merchant? Okay, so this actually might be. Okay, so this is a vanilla camp. I I just had no reason to ever come over here, so I never checked it out. Also, Wurtier. By the way, great look, great look. I love this. Lovely. Got the shaman looking hat, but you got trees coming off your shoulders, and the antlers look like the antlers of your of your mount. Black whelp cloak. Finally, dragon skill leather workers get something. Yeah, right. Now, and anyone can make onyxia uh, onyxia cloaks, right? That that's not specifically dragon skill leather working. Like, that's the thing that's crazy to me. They've done nothing for Dragon Scale Leatherworking. Uh, again, Red Dragon Scale is good, but they literally released a whole new raid about dragons in Emerald Sanctum. Not a single Dragon Scale Leatherworking set, piece, anything drops from there. 
Grimbatol might have dra Grimbatol has dragons right now. <laughs> yeah. I you know what? I'll make sure I I will bug all the team members as much as I can to be like, hey, dragons go leather working though, imagine. I literally keep the uh that profession on a bomb saloon because it's part of her backstory. I should totally have another profession that actually makes gold, but I don't. Shadow Dragon Scales. See, now we're talking. Riddle understands. Um, Muho Lynx Pattern Dreamhide Mantle. I have it linked up here. It's the most leather workers get. I mean, you can make... Um, leather workers can learn how to make Dreamhide, right? Which you would need for this recipe. This is not that bad of a piece. 2% dodge. 1% return is healing. Um, bear tanks would love this. Eat it up. And the four set gets you attack, uh, feral attack power. So, yeah, that's good. But again, like, it's just leatherworking. And I'm not saying every new leatherworking thing that comes out should be, like, separated into the three branches. I think it's limiting at times. But it just felt weird to them have a whole new raid about dragons and not have a dragon scale leatherworking piece. The chromatic dragon scales are not used besides the two quests. Yep, that's true. Uh, Wisebeard, um, I, I don't need them anymore, but I could totally give them to my guild because I stole a lot from them. Oh, they use dream scales in blacksmith. I didn't realize. Thank you, Wisebeard. You see, Blackwing Guard, I'll get you back. I took a lot from their bank. I was convinced it would work, guys. Although, let's be honest. Like, I can actually even show you guys if uh, I bring up this. Uh, let's see, blue dragon scale, right? So I'll bring this up. Um, so here's blue dragon scales. Reagent four, the set, and storm scale leggings. I don't even know what these are. Oh, wait, you need you need the blue dragon scale leggings to make these? Wait, are these in the game? Am I, am I gaslighting myself? Is this in the game? What does it do? Okay, there it is. Hmm. Well, ho hold up. Hold up. When did these get in the game? Do I need to rescind everything I just said? So so this is like a crafting within a crafting because you need the blue dragon scale leggings, bunch of enchanted leather, rugged leather, more cured rugged hides, of course, a lot of essence of airs. Oh, it drops the faster ghost. Oh, easy. Oh, of course. Just 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 walk up and grab that, sure. Um, let me see. Is it a bind on pickup recipe? It does require dragon skill leather working, so I'll give you that. Hmm. I mean it's not like it's certainly not this. Um, so the pants I use on Obomb Swimming are Primalist Linked. Come on. Am I not smelling it? Primalist link Leggards. They're improved on this server. So, yeah, it does less damage, but you get two crit and one hit and better stats. And that's a trash drop I think in BWL maybe it's off one boss or two bosses I mean the storm scale leggings aren't bad I'm not going to say they're bad they're not um, the mana cost of your nature spells I wonder if that works but that's interesting I know I know there's things about dragon scale leather working I don't know I was just sad the four set bonus stunk Yeah. 
I, I mean, the, who's going to have dragon scale leatherworking? I, wait, it doesn't look cool. That's... Oh, man, that's it? Those look like... Um, that's identical to the Azerite leggings, which drop in Black Morass. They reused the model. <sighs> Bummer. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's good to know it exists. No skirt, rip. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, the 15, the arcane resist isn't, isn't bad. Um, I'm not even joking. Uh, I die a lot on Obomswin when I do scare him. It has more to do with the fact that I pull threat and die, but, um, I used the four set on scare him because I just had a lot of arcane resist and I lost a lot of damage, but that's okay because I end up pulling a lot of threat. So I used it there and lived, but yeah. I think I think we're gonna wrap it up there. I know this has actually only been a two-hour stream, but what you don't know is behind the scenes. Right before this, I had a uh, radio team meeting. They're I don't think I can talk about a lot of the stuff they're doing. I know they want to have some material for the summer, the midsummer. Um. There might be stuff for April Fools. I mean, I might even want to do something for April Fools with my news broadcast. But it was a brainstorming session, but it was very productive. Also to get to know the people in the radio team a little better. <laughs> yes, Riddle. But yeah, I think we'll wrap it up uh wrap up here. Uh, appreciate the little walkabout through Red Ridge. And again, it's a great zone. It's a great zone. And it also has the color palette of the barons. So for many horde people, it, it feels like home. I mean, you look at this and it's like, oh, am I in Stone Talon or, or the barons? Nope, you're in Red Ridge. <laughs> Do you think they'll kill me in Darnassus? I mean, I can go take a look, right? Don't, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. We're cool, we're cool, we're cool. Uh, it's, it's it's very pretty here. Uh, hot Steppa, I I mean you can't stealth. Oh come on, Thalaria. Scarfe, t tell Thalaria how rude that is. <laughs> I mean I can just stay in here, right? Like do guards wander in here? Uh, we are friendly. I mean I'm not ganking anyone. I mean when you walk out there, Hot Steppa, those guards might attack you. And by might, I mean they're they're gonna kill you. Oh right, right, right. Uh, get out of group. Get out of group. We are not allowed to do cross faction PvP. We can do cross faction RP, but um, if <laughs> Riddle, <laughs> Riddle, I'm watching you heal someone cross faction. Stop doing that. Um, thank you for taking the guards away. Do they have a thief catcher here? They must, right? <laughs> oh, that, well... So, Vazia says technically that was cross-faction PvE. That's true, but we're both flagged and we're in, in a hostile city. So, that's kind of a hard sell. What I want to do, though, is uh, I want to end by swimming around here with my swimming set. I have to get to where I can safely get my Kodo out. Get right on the ground here. All right, no one's going to notice me here. No narcs, no narcs. All right, we're going to swim, baby. Do I have the full subs? All right. Yeah, look at that. They'll, they, they'll never catch me. I swim too quickly. And then I can stealth. Yeah, this would be my new home for a little bit. Well, okay, so, so Caden, right? 
that's going to be a hard rule to enforce when faction leaders give loot. So here's the thing about that. You can't walk in to a city. Well, as the rules, like you can't be a mixed alliance and horde group and then do a raid. You need to be a purely horde or alliance when you do a city raid. Though Those are actually the rules. The fish slayer has become the fish. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see that. I see that. Oh, whoa, look at me go. Look at me go. Unfortunately, I have a breathing bar. See, like, like, don't repeat that because I think I'll drown. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you for the portal to Darnassus. I'm sure I can find my way home eventually. This is me stealth swimming, by the way. If anyone who's a rogue has gone swimming, you know how blazingly fast this is. Now, of course it'll occur, but I don't personally, Caden, I don't want to... I don't, like, on my stream, I want to make sure people know that it's against the rules, and I don't want to be seen supporting it. Whoa, okay, there's a... Uh, I got out of water. I still have that glitch. Um, but yeah, I don't want I don't want people to think that it's it's allowed. Because a lot of people watch my material and are trying to learn about the server, so I don't want them to think that it's it's cool. I mean it's definitely cool, but it's not it's not allowed. <laughs> I can't oh man. Come on, just help nope, nope. How about this? Nope. How about I zoom my camera out? Nope. How do I zoom my camera in? Come on. Come on. Uh, nothing. What if I keep walking? Will it, will it fix itself? Yeah, it did. Okay, great. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, will anyone kill me over here? Maybe not. All right. So, everyone. Uh, should be streaming next week. Keep an ear out for uh, any new radio programs as well. Murag recorded a new one. So keep an eye out for that. We'll always support Murag because she supports me. <laughs> um, we got uh, probably news this next week. I don't know of any big announcements that are brewing, but we'll keep we'll keep an eye out. So at the very least, I'll have the news out. Don't have any other particular plans. I am considering maybe uh, next fish and chat maybe i'll start with a bomb swim we have to figure out a good transmog for her i need to change something about her look i thought that might be a fun thing to do i have like 30 fashion coins so oh yeah we'll uh we'll catch everyone later thank you for dropping by uh try to remember while you're playing video games to have fun be safe and as always remember the deadliest weapon is knowledge. <laughs>